All right, welcome back, everybody. So we are now starting our second week on ordinary differential equations. In the previous week, uh, we looked at forward Euler and backward Euler methods of integrating trajectories through differential equations. Um, we looked at the stability and error properties, and we also then derived uh, a second order Runge-Kutta scheme that has better error accuracy properties. Um, we essentially cooked up an integrator and tuned its parameters so that it was more accurate. And the last thing I did was I wrote down the fourth order Runge-Kutta integration scheme, which is what MATLAB uses for ODE 45. Okay, so last week we really dealt with the theory and getting comfortable with, uh, with concepts like stability and accuracy. But this week is really fun. We're going to try out our integrators on lots of neat and complex systems. Okay, so this is really where the rubber hits the road. Okay, good. So I just want to review a couple of the concepts. Right? We have a vector field y dot equals f of t comma y. I'm going to call this all kinds of things. I'm going to call this an ordinary differential equation. I'll call it a nonlinear ODE. I might call it a dynamical system because it changes in time. Um, or I might say that f is a vector field, okay? Because I think of y as some kind of particle who has a trajectory in space, and f tells me what directions its velocity field is pointing at any time and at any location. Okay, so last time, maybe I'll just write ODE2. We're in our second week of ODEs. This is very exciting. So last time, we saw the fourth order Runge Kutta. Okay, the fourth order Runge Kutta integrator. And this is what MATLAB calls ODE45, okay? So MATLAB actually does something a tiny bit fancier than what we're doing. Um, <laughs> what 4, 5 really means is that MATLAB is actually taking an adaptive time step to keep its error bounded uh, below some threshold tolerance, but it's built on the fourth order Runge Kutta scheme, okay? So as before, we have yk plus 1 equals yk plus delta t over 6 times f1 plus f plus 2 times f2 plus 2 times f3 plus f4. And I'll tell you what f1, f2, f3, and f4 are. So f1 is equal to my f evaluated at tk, yk. Good. f2 is f evaluated at tk plus delta t over 2, and yk plus delta t over 2, f1. Interesting. So delta t is the time step, right? I'm simulating some trajectory forward in time. Maybe this is a asteroid moving through the solar system. Maybe this is an oil plume spreading throughout the Gulf of Mexico. Maybe this is the flow of a little particle uh, past a Boeing 747 wing or a piece of dust that's being entrained into uh, the downwash of a rotor blade on a helicopter. Okay, these are all systems that people are actively working on today and they probably are using this integrator. So this is interesting. Delta T over two, that's a half step in the, in the future, we're taking a half forward Euler step, okay? So we're taking a, this is a delta t over two half forward Euler uh, based on f1. So in some sense, I probe my velocity field at my current time and position, and it gives me some direction, some vector, I take a little half step in that vector direction, and then I probe the vector field again. I see what's my velocity field there. So then F3 is F at TK plus delta T over two, YK plus delta T over two, and now we're evaluating at this new velocity. Okay, so we're taking another half forward Euler. 
So this is another half forward Euler, but now using F2, this new vector field direction. So when I say vector field, I really mean um, a field of vectors. So like, let's say that this is Y. This is the space that Y lives in. This is space. And in time, I have vector fields which change. And so if I'm a particle, I literally integrate through this vector field in space and time. Okay. <coughs> Okay, good. So now the final step, F4, is F4 equals our vector field F evaluated at TK plus delta T. Now this is looking like a full Euler step. YK plus delta T F3. Okay? And that's all it is. So this is now a full Euler full forward Euler using F3, okay? So this is actually pretty straightforward. Um, it's intuitive to think about what's actually happening here. Deriving this integrator and showing that it has favorable error properties is quite involved and we would like to avoid it, okay? <coughs> Good. Okay, so what are some properties of this? Um, some properties, it's very accurate. At least every little dt step it takes, it's very accurate. So it's order delta t to the fifth local. That means per time step, uh, which gives it order delta t to the fourth global, meaning over the entire trajectory, this is how much error we expect to accrue. Um, and it uses four evaluations of our vector field. So typically evaluating your vector field, right, actually computing what is y dot at a point t and y, that's typically the expensive part, okay? So if, uh, if you're a Boeing engineer and you're trying to compute kind of where this fluid particle is going, actually querying the velocity field or evaluating f of t comma y, that's the expensive part, and you want to minimize that number of operations. So this actually has four evaluations, which is more than forward Euler, more than backward Euler, more than second order Runge Kutta, but we pay a price of having more evaluations, but much, much better accuracy. So we have to take less time steps overall so overall, this is actually faster to run at the same accuracy. Okay, good. So what I really want to do now is code this up. I think we owe it to ourselves to try Runga Kutta 4 on a really cool example. Um, so I'm going to tell you what the example is, and then we're going to code it up. So the example is the Lorentz model. I'm going to write down what the Lorentz model is, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. So it's really, really simple. Three equations, but they're nonlinear. X dot equals, uh, equals sigma times Y minus X. Okay, this part's not, this is linear, right? Sigma is a number. Y dot equals X times rho minus Z minus y. Okay, so this is nonlinear. x times z, that's a nonlinear function. Nonlinear meaning, um, I mean, a linear function, if I have f of x equals 2x, if I plug in x equals 2 or an x equals 4, then the answer should be twice as big, right? So f of 4 should equal 2 times f of 2 if linear, and clearly uh, f of x equals x to the third power is not 
linear. I use the word linear a lot. This is kind of math jargon, but this is what, what you mean by linear. Okay. okay, so back to Lorentz equations, x dot equals sigma y minus x, y dot equals x rho minus z minus y. This is the first nonlinear term. Z dot equals x y minus beta z. Okay, Lorentz's equations. Um, Lorentz was a really cool mathematician. Um, he is one of the fathers of chaos theory. So there's kind of many schools of thought about the notion of chaos. Um, and Ed Lorentz came up with one of the most compelling examples that's still used widely to this day, the Lorentz equations. This was in 1963. He actually cooked up this simple three uh, systems of equations to study a simplified version of atmospheric convection, which is very important for weather and climate. Okay, so this is an atmospheric convection model. And we might think that this is crude by the standards of today. So now um, we're very interested in predicting weather and climate for a very long time out. And so we have extraordinarily complex models. But this is a very simple one that he could actually study in 1963 numerically. OK. And there's some parameters in the system. There's some parameters that lead to chaos. Now, we're going to kind of have a gentle introduction to what chaos means. I'm not really going to talk much about it uh, in this lecture, but we're going to start seeing this uh, more and more and more over the next three lectures because it's profoundly important for what type of integrator you use. So some parameters may lead to chaos. And in particular, he used sigma equals 10, beta equals 8 thirds, and rho equals 28. Don't ask me how he cooked these up. But these parameters lead to the so-called butterfly effect that we've all seen pictures of. So if I look at a trajectory, this trajectory is going to go around to these two wings of the butterfly. But it's very hard to tell how long the trajectory will stay on one wing before it switches to the other. In some sense, this is one of the, the ways that we mean chaos, that there's this unpredictable rapid switching between states that occurs, and we really can't predict it. If I try to predict this 20 iterations out, my computer is not accurate enough to do that. OK, so this is what we're going to do for the rest of the lecture. We're going to be working on this nonlinear vector field that has interesting phenomenon. <coughs> and we're going to code up the fourth order runge kutta scheme that we have uh, derived in the last lecture, well, kind of derived, and that we have written here. Good? Good. OK. So let's go to MATLAB and let's start with our runge kutta integrator, OK? Because I think that's a good place to start. <coughs> OK, so if we can all go to the MATLAB screen now. I'm going to clear all of my memory and close all of my figures. All right, uh, do we have MATLAB? Looks like there's a bit of a delay. OK, good. So we're in MATLAB. So clear all, close all. Actually, I'm not writing a script. I'm writing a function. So I don't need to close all or clear all. right? So MATLAB is really great about having scope, uh, which means that if I create a function kind of inside that function, it doesn't care about anything else except what I pass as inputs. OK, so my function. What am I going to call this function? Um, I'm going to call it RK4 single step. Because really, the formula I wrote on the board is one delta t time step of the runge kutta integrator. OK, so RK4 single step is what I'm going to call it. And I want to give it an output of y out. So this has an output. I want to output my next trajectory. Um, the inputs are some function, some vector field that I'm integrating. Uh, dt, the time step. T naught, which is kind of what is the time I'm evaluating my vector field. 
and why not. Um, maybe I'll call this why, yeah, I'll call it why not. <coughs> this really means why in or why k. I'm just gonna make some comments. So why not can be thought of as why k. Why out is why k plus one. And uh, t naught is tk, okay? So I want this to be very general. Um, in fact, why don't I just do that? I'll just say this is yk and tk. Good. Why be confusing? Okay, good. So the first things I have to do, if you recall, is I have to evaluate f1, f2, f3, and f4. So F1 was my vector field, right? Fun is my right-hand side of um, y dot equals f of t comma y. So F1 is my function evaluated at tk, yk. Good, that was the first step. That was what we wrote in math. Now F2 is my function evaluated at tk plus delta t over two and yk plus uh, delta t over two times f1. Great. Similarly, f3 is my function at tk plus dt over two, yk plus dt over two times f2. I'm just literally transcribing what we had written on the board into MATLAB code. And f4 is my function evaluated at tk plus delta t at yk plus delta t times f3. Okay, so I've evaluated my function f1, f2, f3, f4. And now I'm going to have these in the output. So y out equals yk plus dt over six times f1 plus two f2 plus two f3 plus f4. Okay, and let's just look at the board and convince ourselves that this is actually what we had. Okay, so F1 is F evaluated at TK, YK. F2 is F at TK plus delta T over two, YK plus delta T over two F1, F3 and F4. So this is what we have. Um, and then the last step is to say YK plus one is YK plus delta T over six and then add up these Fs, okay? Good, so let's go back to MATLAB. Now just a quick question to the class. Is it possible for me to cut F2 and put it ahead of F1? That's right, it's not possible because I, I use F1 when I'm evaluating F2. So I need to do these in order, that's really important. Okay, so this is my fourth order Runga Kutta um, single step integrator, okay, great. I'm gonna save that as RK4 single step, and I really hope that I don't mess up my code, so I'm gonna call it B. <coughs> Good. Okay, great, so we have an integrator, but we haven't tested it yet. So now let's try the Lorentz equation, okay? So now I'm gonna make another function, which is my vector field, my Lorentz vector field. Function dy equals Lorentz. Now Lorentz is a function of time, uh, my vector y, which is in, um, in MATLAB, y is a vector of x, y, and z. Sigma, beta, and rho are my parameters. Okay, so y is three-dimensional state vector. <coughs> okay, and in MATLAB, the way that it likes to proceed is it wants dy to be a column vector that's the same size as y. So dy equals a column vector. The first row is uh, x dot equals sigma y minus x. So this is sigma times y, which is the second entry, minus x, which is the first entry. So this is sigma times y minus x. Okay, the next row is my second equation, y dot equals x times row minus z minus y. So that's x is y1 times rho minus z is y3 minus y, which is y2. So if I got this right, this should be x times 
rho minus z quantity minus y. And then the third row is my third equation of motion, which is x, whoop, x is y1 times y, which is y2, minus beta times z, which is y3. That's x times y minus beta times z. Okay, I hope I got that in correctly. And this is a column vector, right? So the first row, the second row, the third row. This is my vector field for Lorentz, and I'm going to save it as Lorentz B. Good. Okay, great. So I have a, a nonlinear vector field that has interesting solutions. I have a, a single step Runge Kutta integrator. And now I'm going to, what am I going to do? Now I'm actually going to simulate particles running through this vector field. Okay, so now it's time for a script. We've written two functions. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I've saved them in the same folder. And now I'm going to write a script to simulate particles through the Lorentz attractor. Okay? So what do I do? I say clear all. And I want to input Lorentz's original parameters that are interesting and lead to chaos. Let's just say they're chaotic. Okay, that was, I think, sigma equals 10, beta equals 8 thirds, and rho equals 28. So if you like, um, it might be useful to actually have the PDF version of my lecture notes in front of you when we kind of go through this MATLAB, because in that case, it's a little bit easier just to kind of see where everything's coming from. Okay, so these are Lorentz's parameters. I'm going to start with an initial condition. Um, and you know, I just played around with this until I found something I thought looked interesting. Uh, so x is, starts with minus eight, y is gonna be eight, and z is 27. And now I'm going to compute the trajectory. So I like to comment my code, uh, and this is the comment that tells me that now I am computing the trajectory. Okay, how long do I wanna integrate for? Well, I think I'm gonna try to integrate for four seconds with a dt of 0.01. So my time span is zero to dt to four. So I'm gonna go from zero to four in increments of 0.01. So something like 400 time steps. Uh, okay, now what I wanna do is I actually wanna keep track of all of my trajectory. I don't just want the last value, I want all of the intermediate values. So I'm gonna create a big object, capital Y, and the first column of capital Y is my initial condition. And what I'm gonna do is every time I get a new Y, Y1, Y2, Y3, dot, 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 YK, I'm going to tack those on as columns of Y, capital Y. Okay, Y in equals Y not. So four I equals one to time span. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Let's see. Um, yeah, maybe one over time span and over dt. Okay, let me just save my code right now and run it to see what's here. So I'm gonna save this as sim Lorentz b. Okay, I'm gonna run this code, what happened? Okay, so I have y is a vector, y in is the same vector. Okay, good. Um, and let's see what time span is. Time span is a big vector of time, and time span end is four, and time span end divided by dt is 400. Okay, so I wanna take 400 time steps. Good, so from one to time span end over dt. It's just a complicated way of saying from one to 400. Um, my time is i times dt. Time doesn't matter in this Lorentz vector field. If you notice, the equations have no mention of time, but I'm still gonna keep track of it. And y out equals rk4 single step. Remember, my rk4 single step has a function, a dt, a tk and a yk. So my function is at t comma y Lorentz. And remember Lorentz has five inputs, t, y, sigma, beta, and rho. 
But since I've already defined sigma, beta, and rho, I can lock those into place using function handles at t comma y and turn this into just a function of t and y. Very useful kind of MATLAB trick. Um, if you feel fuzzy on function handles, please uh, remember to watch the short five minute uh, supplementary lecture on function handles. Okay, the other entries were dt uh, time and y in. Okay, right, I have y in defined. And then once I get y out, I'm gonna tack it on to my trajectory. So big Y is equal to big Y plus tacking on y out, right? So y out is a column vector. I'm just tacking this column vector on to the end. Um, and at the end of my loop, the last point in my trajectory, y out, becomes my new y in <coughs> for the next iteration of the loop. End. Okay, great, so now I can, uh, okay, hopefully this runs, hopefully this actually integrates a particle. I'm gonna integrate and hit save and run, and I don't get any errors. So let's plot our results. Let's say plot three. I'm gonna plot the first, um, so what is Y? Y is a big matrix, and each column is my state at a time. So the first row of big Y is my X trajectory, the second row is my Y trajectory, and the third row is Z as a function of time, my third trajectory. So I wanna plot them like this, uh, and I'm gonna plot this in blue. Okay, let's see. Very nice. So this is the kind of butterfly that we're used to seeing. This is the Lorentz butterfly. Let's integrate for a bit longer. Uh, let's integrate for, instead of zero to four, let's integrate from zero to 15. Notice this is why I have time span end divided by dt, because I don't wanna change that line every time I decide to integrate for shorter or longer. Okay, it's running, and now you see that I'm filling in this butterfly nicely. Okay, so I just want to compare against uh, MATLAB's ODE45, because we've been using that before, and honestly, in general, ODE45 is a great integrator. You don't need to write your own. Um, I just thought we should see how you would do it. So I have this plot on, I'm gonna hold it, and then I'm gonna use MATLAB's built-in integrator, ODE45, and it takes basically the same arguments. It wants a function of t and y, so I'm going to wrap Lorentz t comma y comma sigma beta rho with a function handle, and it wants a time span and a y naught. And then I'm going to plot its answer, which is y colon one, y colon two, y colon three. And I'm gonna plot that in red. Okay, RK for single step, ODE 45. Uh, and notice that it's actually, um, it's a matrix with, a, its output Y is a matrix that has the same shape as our matrix transposed. So I want colon one, the first column is going to give me um, the X coordinate. Okay, let's hope everything works and I run this and here I go. I see, um, I see that they start at the same initial condition, they run through and they're agreeing very, very nicely. But interestingly, they actually start to diverge after a little bit of time, right? So this is the final time after four. They're not exactly in agreement. Okay, this is not because our RK4 is incorrect. It's just because MATLAB's built-in ODE45 uses a slightly adaptive, a different time step. They're using an adaptive time step. Um, and this system turns out to be sensitive to issues like that. Okay, um, so that's all I wanna talk about today. Um, tomorrow's lecture, rather next lecture, we're going to be talking more about this Lorentz system, kind of why is there a little bit of error between our integrator and MATLAB's integrator, even though they're built on the exact same mathematics. Um, and we're gonna talk about vectorized particle integration. Okay, so there's lots of exciting stuff to come, um, but that's all for now, thank you. <laughs>